One of the most devastating news that President Ruto has failed to understand and to come to terms with is not the fact that Kenyans lost their lives or rather properties were destroyed, but is the fact that parliament was stormed. And remember this is the president of Africa and Mudavadi had told the country about our diplomatic standing, the way we have good traction out of the country. So that statement do not sit well with the president or that occurrence did not sit well with the president and the sub-developments that have happened tonight. Um, before you look at that, um, if you're within Gidurai, what exactly is going on? Because Gidurai is currently trending in Twitter tonight and they're saying there is some shooting there. Of um, There's a police officer who was allegedly shot early, in the, maybe in the evening. And then there is some retaliatory activity going on there. So I think we just need to embrace peace. This country belongs to all of us. If we want to really tone down, then we must stop, avoid revenge and retaliation at whatever cost. We must stop that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to help the president, you know, and, and let us just look at this. Eh? This act of storming the president, uh, the, the parliament has really shocked many. And I, I, I was told the MPs, one of the MPs even collapsed. One of the women MP even collapsed in parliament when he saw the crowd was, she saw the crowd was coming there and they had to be evacuated to some, um, uh, to, 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 to the basement of the parliament. But do you remember um, sometime, I think that was after the election, after the US election, uh, back then in 2021 January, and Donald Trump had lost against Biden. And so Trump supporters breached one of the most iconic American buildings and engulfing the nation into chaos. Trump urged his supporters to fight against the ceremonial counting of the electoral votes that had confirmed, that were to confirm Biden as the president-elect. And um, shortly after that, hundreds of pro-Trump protesters pushed through the barriers set up along the perimeter of the Capitol where they tussled with officers in full riot gear and some calling the officers even traitors there and after 90 minutes another 90 minutes later police say demonstrators got into the building and doors of the floor and the senate were being locked shortly after that the house floor was evacuated by the police so vice president Mike pence who was uh, also there was evacuated in the chamber with there to perform his duty so the storm of uh, the chambers is not, is not new. Even in the U.S. it happened. And I don't know, I, I, I'm just reading, people from U.S. can tell us, it was not made a matter of life and death, by the way. It was not made a matter of life and death. So, but that is a, a, an act of public registering their anger and the courage to go and storm. It is not very easy, and it's not just usual to say, is going to be done now guys the second development here is nairobi police commander adamson bungay has been recalled tonight and is now getting to be replaced by hassan ali barua who was the former police commander from homa bay so ali hassan barua has been pushed has been picked from homa bay and in that overhaul, understand there is a security overhaul that is going on and quite top brass. Top security brass will go, is going to be affected by that reshuffle. But Bungay is the one who is in charge of Nairobi and has been moved, now has been recalled back to headquarters. Recalled, I remember the last time Kinoti was recalled. First he was recalled, then after being recalled, then, you know, he disappeared there. He was never, never come to public. So Bungay, who has been in charge in the last protest, he was in charge of Nairobi. In the last protest against Wale, he was issuing press briefings and the threats left, right and center and, and all this. So what could be behind it? We are going to explain that. But before we look at this, 
I want you to look at, uh, if you look at this photo, this is the Uganda building. The Uganda building is right opposite, um, if, you come, if you come from the Parliament Road, just opposite Supreme Court. Those are criminals and police were there. So something needs to be explained there, Kindi. I'm saying that because uh, I have seen people linking now some boards, I don't know, some, some organizations, some, some, some NGOs or something to whatever is happening in town. But in that instant, police seem to be there when that vandalism is going on. The other one is uh, the office of Sakaja. So all along, since this protest started, it has never been about Nairobi. These officers have CCTV. Yes, the office of the governor, I want to believe I have CCTV. So if we should be shown the last 10 minutes of then they can have a video on Nani Atali Washamoto for that office to be banned. Why am I saying? The governor has also been facing corruption allegations. Quite in the city hall. And some people, I've seen some county governments, even, even the county assembly, some people and some uh, leaders will use this opportunity to ban, then say, you know, because I've seen someone is making a joke that, you know, you'll be told some documents are missing. They were banned by the protesters. I don't believe there was a target. I don't believe there was a target. I don't believe protesters because how long did it take them? If, if they were targeting the, the, the office of the, of the governor, they would have done that even, previous, even last week. And I'm not saying. So, people that burnt the office, uh, Governor Sakadia's office are criminals. People that broke down that, uh, people that burnt that Ugandan building, is, uh, those are criminals. And those are not protesters. And that is why police must just do its investigations. What I'm glad about is that those two organize, those two buildings, Around that area, around that area, there is CCTV. So police will be able to fish out and just find out this, 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 and this. So that we don't just profile people. Something is really amiss. Now, um, we'll explain why has uh, the security, why, what is behind that security overhaul. It's very critical for us to look at that, try to break it down and understand what could be behind it. But some, int some other news that I uh, also wanted to bring to attention is about Ambassador Meg Whitman is reported to have uh, been whisked out, whisked, out, whisked out of the country. These reports are yet to be confirmed. But of course, looking at the trend and how the direction that, that civil unrest had, unta had taken, you know someone who said you share the numbers of leaders and revisit, though, that strategy was um, is very lethal, very lethal. I've even seen some photos, screenshot now emerging of allegedly police officers who are blamed to have maybe breached violated people's rights. Ambassador Med Whitman is reported to have been whisked out of the country because if you look at what the international media had reported, if parliament has been attacked, state house, some different houses, someone was talking about, you know, this and that. So, there have been a problem. But now, I want us to look at that. Security overhaul and dropping, because I've, I'm, I'm, I've been seeing, I've seen even kin, someone saying, kin, kin, even the IG should step down. In established democracies, someone should have, should have taken responsibility. And this that Nairobi, that civil, uh, that, that, that civil coup, that civil unrest, I don't believe, and, um, and entirely I think will be so narrow and unfair, just to look at what police got wrong. We should not sacrifice and narrow our perspective to what police got wrong. Police got everything else wrong, even though some, somewhere on the right, yes, you could see, when, when, when the gentleman was telling them that we also are fighting for our children, we are fighting for this country, so leave me go, they allowed him. They allowed him off the car, off, off, the, off the police lorry. They went. There was also another police officer who was actually captured. Um, 
was captured helping a lady akimpatia uh, maji aoshe mkono macho there was one police officer who lost his brother and he realized that his colleague in uh, plain cloth had shot his brother who was in the protest and uh, he removed the uniform there and then he removed the uniform and said he was crying and saying he doesn't want now to be in it anymore everything got wrong i still don't understand why the security apparatus decided to go after the humanitarian aid the red cross and the organizations and someone that had put their medical camps there to support i i, I still don't understand maybe those in the know and those who can explain will make us understand now the six reasons why president truto why the nairobi operation became very difficult and even to suppress the nairobi pricing especially on the front of police in fact we need to explain there is something we need to understand here um the security analysts know very well that um with the people that have been killed there's some police that are going to be blamed not so police are responsible especially around the build, parliament building and other areas so police are very responsible but at this critical time i want you to imagine you are the head of operation nairobi then after that incident you are removed and recalled what are they communicating they're already communicating something to the members of the public that if things went wrong then it was so and so so we are removing him so that we bring another person that could be the perception number one so there is a strategy of saving face at all oh, this didn't go well but now we want to save face what's happening in kenya is getting traction even beyond here and people are um, and, and and i think we we have listened even to the, how the president is handling things it is very true that uh, the public are showing their resentment and as a president or as the leaders in power you have the security apparatus at your disposal and he has mentioned we take pride in security apparatus but remember what happened in Nairobi did not start as a, a security issue no it it was an a governance accountability and then when things got out of hand and people bought remember i can tell you why not and 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 i'm and, and i'm thinking the security guys should just um, should just give a wider perspective why is it that last week they could not occupy parliament why because numbers so today the numbers were all there i saw a video where at the gate police were in the middle and i really sympathized with them police were in the middle protesters were this side others on the other side now what were meja what can you do what can you do what can you do how oh, i i think that aspect of saving face is there and someone wants to and we we are thinking it's a security lapse no it's not a security lapse it's a governance lapse we reached here because someone has monopoly of ideas and everything is to be done number 2 i think maybe the national security council are reading a failed strategy failed counter strategy someone just telling me that kevin what what do you think could happen happened because a piece were evacuated from the house from the senate and, and i think even kina sefona had left and then people made their way they were burning a section of the parliament and um, when people got inside they went to cafeteria ate and there were a handful of them not not people didn't go into the chamber in numbers by the way there were not that many there were few they went and maybe they ate for some five minutes then they went to the chamber took that video kidogo then they walked out someone is feeling and i think that is what i'm seeing that the security analysts who feel that police were had some luxury 
that they would have stopped because and that is what someone was analyzing that the number that got to parliament the, not all of them went to the chambers people that went to the chambers are few uh, less than 50 you can be seen. and could be could be they're feeling like there was some laxity on it and that is why they are now sacrifice of other people being put on toes on this number three um For the first time, for this for this protest, why Nairobi was very technical, it didn't have the security apparatus didn't have a political backing behind them. Political goodwill behind them. For example, if you compare to last year, the Gadi Gashaga used to wake up at 5 a.m. and meeting that Bungay and IG and security officers to plan on how they were going to neutralize the demos because it was looking very colorful that, you know, I'm going to deal with Raila. So that was going to make him popular in Mount Kenya. But this one was different. And even from the press briefing that was done yesterday, when Kindiki was issuing that press briefing, I, was, I, would, have, I would have expected that the minister is speaking, the, attorney, the inspector general is there, the police commander is there, like, is, like it has always been in the past. This one, apart from Kindiki, even that Bunge did not issue a statement, not even IG released a statement. And they might have realized that um, it didn't have that much of... And remember, where the majority? Yes, where the majority? The police officer, Munyalikwa, that one who was leaving people just to go and protest. Why? He was told, we are fighting for your rights. We are fighting for your rights, even you. Not that it's only me. And he gave up and said, oh, you know, he left that man to go. And so that's why I'm also seeing those bit of it. And I think there are also internal, um, internal dis disjoints, internal conflicts. Recently, there have been a push and pull between National Police Service and National Police Commission. I, think, I don't know if it's the police service and there is, there is NPS and there is commission on who is ahead of who. And the minister was siding with one side. I don't know which one. So there could have been that. But th uh, the other thing is um, it's, a, it's a practice. It's one of, um, it's, it's a practice in the security, rather in governance, I see. People being reshuffled here, you know, believing that now I'm bringing fresh energy, probably fresh ideas. It's part of this fear strategy to sell the fear to the public and telling you, oh no, we have now another man. And so uh, maybe things are going to be different. That has been, that, that is one of the, that, that is one of the strategies in the security circle. But I think it will be interesting. Uh, we'll see the development um, moving forward because things seems not to be really promising. We just have tomorrow and we never know what is coming next. Thank you. Thank you guys. So thank you guys. So I'm living in Kiabu Karabaine. As I promised you I was going to visit Mam Evans. Uh Mama Evans at the Tonte just a while just my farm and so the order of farm spend the two days uh, our contribution to this. We said we wanted to stand in solidarity with the Mama. The Mama on behalf of the bold charity team that I present on behalf of my own family, Mama. It's also a Mama like you. I remember the point here and I end up here. Let's share. God give you strength. It is not very easy to do that. Some of us are still young, but this is something very big. Tumejua <laughs> Thank you.
Santi. So guys, uh, Mama has told us on by Evans at Zippo on Friday. Yes. Yeah, Evans at Zippo on Friday. So they are still under plans. For some reason, when they go to Zippo, they will go to Zippo. Yeah, to Zippo. Because for some reason, it's 5K. It's 5K. Love for another post. So Evans will be buried here by Evoma on Friday. God willing, we can also get time and thank you very much guys this was a one day notice i'm finally here and this is what i say there is solution beyond journalism and thank you for coming through to be part of this solution because we cannot sit and complain and just report without being part of the solution as i think